welcome to a new edition of Champ Speak. Champ Speak is all about Indian Oil's elite international sports persons who won laurels for the country over the years and continue to inspire the new generation of sports persons. We've had uh, the likes of Pulela Gopichan, former All England champion. We had uh, Commonwealth Games gold medalist Sharad Kamal. Today we have a badminton ace who represented the country twice in the Olympics. It's no mean feat. He represented India first. The first time badminton was introduced in Barcelona in 1992. In the next Olympics as well at Atlanta in 1996, he reached the badminton nationals finals five times and was champion on three occasions. Though five consecutive finals, again, no mean achievement. And very recently in life, he battled odds to overcome a life-threatening brain ailment and came out trumps. Time to meet our guest today, Deepankar Bhattacharji. Deepankar, as always, a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure meeting you too. Thank and you it's time much. now to hear your inspiring story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Deepankar, it's uh, been such a long journey, such a fascinating journey. All began in your hometown in Guwahati, in Assam. Yes. You're a proud son of the state. Yes. Maybe the only badminton player from the state to have represented the country in the Olympics. Uh, yes. How was the initiation? I am sure your parents would have played a big role. Yes. Uh, it started off at a uh, very early age when I was uh, five years old. So my father used to play badminton after his office hours in our neighborhood. So he used to take me along with him after he played with his colleagues. He used to play with me. So that's how it started. It, it was an outdoor uh, badminton court uh, in our neighborhood. So once I started uh, gaining interest my father saw the potential in me and he also felt that you know as a child I was very restless and to channelize my energy he thought uh, that you know I should be initiated into a game in, in, a, in a particular sport so since badminton was the game that he played so he used to take me along so that's how it started and when I started playing well he enrolled me at the Kanaklata Indoor Stadium in Guwahati and there we, a group of youngsters, we learned uh, the basics of badminton with Mr. Pradeep Chalia. And Pradeep himself is a, a, a former IOCN? Yeah, Pradeep, uh, Pradeep Chalia sir was, is a former IOCN and uh, he was a very good player during his times. He, he was a state champion and played nationals many times. And uh, then, you know, one by one, you reached the sub-junior nationals, won the junior nationals uh, in Chennai, which was Madras then in 87, yes. if I remember correctly? Yes, it was 87. So, how was, how was that, uh, you know, that journey, that progress during your junior days? So, um, once I started uh, playing well at the uh, district level, I started winning district championships in, the, in my age group. So, I started representing the state and uh, my first uh, representation was uh, North Eastern Zone uh, Badminton Championship in Durgapur where I represented Assam and uh, then I played the Junior National Championship which was, which was held in Guwahati in 1983. In my first national itself, I reached the uh, Sub-Junior Singles Finals and doubles we became champion. So, that triggered the, uh, that started the journey actually and uh, my father thought Ki I, I have the potential to carry on. And also maybe to advance to the next uh, step, you moved out of Guwahati, uh, you came to Bangalore and, and I believe you are one of the first uh, trainees at the Prakash Padukone Badminton Academy, you got to train under the illustrious uh, master. Yes. I was very lucky because by the time uh, I was speaking, uh, uh, Prakash sir started his badminton academy in 1994 in Bangalore and uh, myself, Gopi Chan, Manjusha, we were the three uh, players who, uh, who were the first students of Prakash sir. So very lucky that at that time Prakash sir started his academy. And also, you at the same time were progressing well at the national level. Five consecutive finals, won three of them. If yeah. you could share those memories, you know, you beat Gopi in one of those finals, Gopi Chand, yes. your contemporary. Yes, yes. 
So, uh, 1992, I reached the finals. I lost to Rajiv Bhagga in the finals. Uh, that was a disappointment because in 1991, I won all the tournaments in the country, ranking tournaments in the country. And uh, I was ranked number one in India. And I came to Chennai uh, for the nationals as a top seed. Uh, so, in the finals, uh, despite beating Rajiv Bhagga 15-1 in the first game, I lost the next two games. You know, it was so disappointing. But uh, immediately after the finals, when I came out, Prakasa was there and he spoke to me, he consoled me. He said, it's okay. Uh, uh, I mean, it, nothing to worry about. So, we are planning to have an academy in Bangalore. So, I hope uh, we will uh, catch up there. So, uh, very nice of him, you know, after that defeat. But uh, uh, in 1994, I uh, won the uh, national title in Lucknow. So, beating Sushant Saxena, uh, I got very emotional then because <laughs> the national title at our times was the biggest, one of the biggest uh, achievements a uh, badminton player could have. Uh, so, that was my first national title, so it was very memorable. Then, continuously, I won another two titles, one in Patiala, 1995, I beat uh, <coughs> Rajiv Bagga. And in 1996, Bharuch, I beat Gopi Chand in the finals. So, uh, th that, that is the journey that uh, I had at the national level. And also in between, you, know, you had your first uh, taste at the, in, at the highest level, I must say, the Olympics, 1992, Barcelona, yes. 96. Both places you did very well. Why I am saying that is, uh, Dipangar, in your days, Unlike now, you know, international exposure was much lesser. Yes. You know, you yes, got yes. to play very few international tournaments. Uh, yes, yes. In spite of that, uh, those limitations, uh, yes, your, yes. you did very well. Share with us the memories of those two Olympics. Uh, as you have rightly said, that uh, international travel was a big thing for us at that time because unless the government uh, sponsored, we couldn't even think of going out because it used to be very expensive and government used to uh, <coughs> sponsor for the big tournaments like the All England, the China Open, the Malaysian Open, all the top class uh, 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 tournaments uh, in the Super Series, they used to sponsor for where all the top players participate. Today what happens is uh, you can start off with the lower ranked tournament and then graduate into the top tournaments. So we didn't have that choice. So, luckily for me, you know, when I played the 1992 uh, Olympics, before that, uh, I played the All England, where I reached uh, the pre quarter finals, the top 16. And um, I played the Swedish and the French Open, where I performed creditably well. And uh, actually, I, my ranking was beyond 200. So, with these five tournaments I played in 1992, including the Thomas Cup, where I captained the Indian team. <coughs> so, uh, my ranking from beyond 200, it came up to 38 before the uh, Olympics. So, that's how I overtook Rajiv Bagga and Vimal Kumar and became the top Indian to be in the top 50s. So, that's how I got selected in Barcelona. The same thing happened in uh, Atlanta. In 1995, I was injured and I couldn't play many tournaments. But uh, when I came back, I won the national title beating Gopi Chand and then five tournaments I played. Uh, I again, uh, my ranking went down and it again came up to 48. And I crossed Gopi Chand and uh, I got selected for the 96 Olympics as well. And that exposure I'm sure would have you know, kept you in very good stead playing the top players. Yes, the Chinese yes. used to dominate. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it was, I am sure, an experience which you would cherish forever. Yeah. Uh, Olympics is a multi-sport event where you get to uh, meet all the top athletes in the world. And uh, the best part is all of them stay in, a, in the village together. So, when you go for breakfast, you get to or uh, meet the top uh, sports persons in the world. So, uh, in Barcelona, I met uh, Jim Courier, then uh, Steffi Graf, and uh, in Atlanta, I met Monica Salas. So, Olympics is something which is, I mean, it's, 
it's a dream and you know once you are there among the top sports persons in the world it, it is just a great feeling i know that i know you for you maybe those were would be the stars and maybe for a tennis star maybe they would love to meet a badminton player so yes, it's it, a multi sport uh, you know conglomerate event. where you as you very rightly said uh, it it's the ultimate dream of any sports person yes yes and then coming to you, you spoke about injuries uh, dipankar injury is a part and parcel of any sportsman's life yes. you had your fair share of that yes, but yes. you battled it and came back stronger every time yes so uh, during our time uh, we didn't have very good physiotherapy uh, you know uh, injury means you have to go to a orthopedic uh, so they will probably give you some painkiller medicine or an injection uh, which is very temporary uh, in nature and then you get the pain once again but today the things are different you know it is so sport specific uh, like uh, during my time i used to play with injuries because you know i was so worried ki i am losing time and you know the competition is high so uh, we used to play with injuries and the injuries used to ag aggravate i i had a serious uh, 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 wrist injury and a shoulder injury for which uh, i had to stop badminton for almost a year before the 1996 atlanta olympics but uh, luckily i recovered and i came back also you spoke about uh, you know battling injury you very rightly said sports medicine as it is today it's a very specialized field which unfortunately was not so during your time huh. but uh, the flip side of it is that many of you like you gopi you all learned you know once we speaking to gopi he said for us it was always like trial and error yeah. you know finding out on your own how to overcome injuries how to come back stronger yes and all in all uh, you know so much has advanced since your time you know and uh, after achieving so much at the international level when was it that uh, you felt now now is the time for me to move to the next phase of my life well uh, it was 1998 hyderabad nationals where i was uh, i had multiple injuries shoulder knee ankle everything was paining because i overstressed and uh, i felt uh, that uh, you know i should take another long break and go to i went to kerala those ayurvedic treatment i stayed there for a month i tried all sorts of things but uh, i couldn't get uh, rid of the injuries and uh, 1998 was my last nationals at hyderabad which where i reached uh, semi finals and uh, after that i stopped badminton as you have rightly said uh, the today the things are different um like uh, you go to uh, you have a kokilaben hospital where you have heath matthews who will give you probably a, a deep tissue massage or a rest strengthening all those things uh, in our times we used to have ultrasound or short wave diathermy those were the only things and those had side effects as well but today it is much more holistic and you know uh, basically uh, the sports medicine has advanced so much that uh, you know players even if they are injured they come back fast and the coaches are also very aware ki if you have some pain in the body you know you rest rest is the most important That's thing true. and you you know don't overstretch and uh, you just uh, touching upon your playing days you know for those of us who are fortunate to watch you your jump you know before your time it was all about touch artistry right. you're one of the first who used to the jump jump smash yes. which the indonesians we remember rudy hartan or you you used to play that very well yes uh, it um, uh, started off uh, with my father's idea that if a toss comes uh, a low low high toss comes you can jump and intercept in between so badminton he used to say that uh, badminton is not so much of a hand game uh, than it is a game of the legs so you have to have strong legs so that you can jump and intercept the shuttle so once i started intercepting the shuttle so i started gaining uh, advantage in the court so and the next thing is you know you when the shuttle is high you jump high before the shuttle reaches you and you 
get to hit the shuttle from a higher position so that it penetrates better and uh, much more effective than a normal smash. So that's how it all started and uh, once I started traveling abroad, I saw the Indonesian and the Chinese uh, doing that and I learned the, the techniques better and I perfected it. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, now coming to your second innings, you know, even while you at school, you were very good at academics. Yes. And then you pursued your MBA. Yes. yes. Uh, and you had a career going on in Indian oil. Yes. Uh, tell us about. Uh, it's not not always easy uh, to take a break and then come back uh, and uh, do studies. Uh, when in 1998, uh, I felt that you know it will be difficult for me to make a comeback in sports. So having played at the highest level, uh, I thought that you know I should focus on the academics part which I have missed during my playing days. So I uh, started preparing for uh, civil services examinations. So I already had a job with Indian Oil. So Indian Oil supported me very well. Then it came to my mind that I should do an MBA as well. So I started preparing for MBA and I got into uh, one of the premier institutions, the SP Jain Institute of Management and Research in Mumbai and I did my MBA. And also about your association with Indian Oil, you played for Indian Oil in the PSPB tournaments, you had a very strong team, you were there, Gopichan, Manjusha, Parna, Puppet, uh, how were those? Uh, yeah, Indian Oil team was, uh, Indian Oil has a very good uh, comprehensive sports policy they recruit the top players uh, in the country. Um, I was uh, recruited in 1993. I and Gopi Chan joined Indian Oil at the same time. And uh, we were a strong team. We played uh, many PSPB tournaments and won the title for Indian Oil. And uh, uh, even after uh, the game, I retired from badminton. The sports policy was such that, you know, they allowed me at least two years to recover and get back into badminton. But when I could not do it, uh, so from 2000 onwards, uh, I started uh, uh, going to office full time. And in the office also, they gave me proper training uh, to take up the jobs that uh, mattered for the company. And uh, the timely uh, promotions and the most important thing is it is a big support for the family you know uh, no I, I don't think any other company can support you so much like Indian oil uh, the medical support you know the you uh, get uh, treatment in the best of hospitals anywhere in the country all nominated hospitals you don't have to worry about anything so I am very lucky to be inducted uh, to Indian Oil, which, which, in the, with the Indian Oil family. Which brings me to a very critical phase of your career, you know, just about a couple of years ago you were diagnosed with a major ailment and you fought it, like on the badminton court, you fought it out in life and came out trumps. It would have been a very difficult phase, uh, Dipangar, if you could share with us about Yes, uh, in 2021, uh, uh, during the COVID times, uh, we, uh, we used to come and play. I mean, uh, the club allowed only few players to come and play uh, here. So I noticed that I was not able to see the shuttle properly. So I thought that I'm, uh, I have to check on my power. So I went to an optician. So they checked all the lenses and couldn't uh, I mean, zero in on any particular power. So then the opticians say that you have to go and see ophthalmologist. I think there is more to it. So when I went uh, to an opth ophthalmologist uh, and did the tests and all that, so it turned out that there is a big tumor inside on the pituitary gland, which was uh, um, obstructing the optical nerve. So it was pressing the optical nerve and my, I was losing vision. So I was so disturbed on, on the day it was diagnosed and I didn't know what to do. Luckily, the op ophthalmologist, she knew a doctor in Hinduja Hospital, Dr. B.K. Misra, who is a very famous uh, uh, neurosurgeon. So getting an appointment was an issue, but 
Indian Oil has contacts with all the best doctors and hospitals in Mumbai and everywhere in the country. So, uh, Mr. Vijay Taude from uh, Indian Oil in my Western Region office, he got an appointment with Dr. B.K. Mishra on the same day. You know, that is what, uh, you know, helped me. You know, the doctor, ophthalmologist said that you have to remove the tumor as early as possible, otherwise you may lose your vision. So we got the appointment and luckily we also got the appointment for surgery and Mr. B.K. Misra being the uh, very uh, uh, expert person, doctor, he did a good job and he removed the tumor and today I am better off. <laughs> and you're back at what you do best, yes. coaching youngsters at the badminton court. And finally, I know we could go on and all, but since uh, time is a constraint, yes. Dipankar would like to know about your family. Your son is following in your footsteps. Yes, um, I am coaching my uh, son uh, to pursue a career in badminton because uh, whether he becomes a champion or not is not the issue. It is basically to make him a balanced individual. In sports, uh, you win one day, you lose the next day. You remain balanced in terms of how you take life. So, uh, and moreover, you also lead a very healthy life. Uh, so, for all that, you know, I devote time with my son in the morning hours, afternoon hours, I go to office. So, uh, I hope that you know we will be able to, uh, uh, I mean, make him a good player. Let's see, and with everyone's blessing, that will also. Yeah, that will always be there, Dipankar. And as you very rightly said, it's, it's not about being a champion; it's being a balanced person. And sports teaches you so much in life. Yes. It was indeed a pleasure listening to your inspiring story. So, well, uh, that is uh, Dipankar Bhattacharya for you, double Olympian, national champion, thrice over and someone who continues to inspire a generation of badminton players. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation with him, his inspiring story. Champ Speak will continue to feature more such uh, international sports persons from Indian Oil in the editions to come. Until then, this is the host S. Kishore bidding goodbye.